Hi, I'm John Paul Volkanen. And I'm Jim Cables. We're here at the Church TV studios from Cleveland. You should sign up at churchmilitant.tv for a premium account for only $10 a month or a free account which you get all the daily shows like The Vortex and Church TV News. We really enjoyed our two videos. Thank, Thank you. you. The second annual churchmilitant.tv Retreat at Sea is coming up in January. This year's theme is about the Catholic Restoration and what you can do to get involved. Click the link for more details. Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. For those in the Catholic Church who like to ignore hell or never give it a thought, think about this. If there is no hell, then there cannot be a heaven. If heaven exists, hell must exist, logically, factually, and philosophically. Sometimes when theologians engage in the work of theology, one of the ways of arriving at understanding is to remove any suggestions that cannot be the case, and what you are left with is what is true. So, as to the question of hell's existence, consider in the first place the question of whether humans have a free will. Despite various Protestant cults rooted in John Calvin's theological oddities that assert we don't have a free will, we do. We most certainly do. How do we know? Because if we don't have a free will, then God has boxed himself into quite the conundrum. Any souls that end up in heaven aren't there because they loved God, but because he pulled them in like moving chess pieces around on a board. And likewise, any souls that would be damned would literally have been tossed into hell, created by God to burn forever. Their sole purpose would be to go to hell. That couldn't be more unbiblical where we hear that God wills that all men be saved. So we must have free will or else God wouldn't have been straight with us. How can you give the Ten Commandments to a person and order him to obey them if he doesn't have a say in the matter because he has no freedom? Might as well hand them to a dog or someone in a coma or hold the pooch or the sick man responsible. All over the scripture we hear, even from the mouth of our blessed Lord himself, we will be judged according to our deeds. In fact, if we didn't have a free will, then why did Jesus have to come and die for us in the first place? The whole Protestant notion that some people are actually created to go to hell is preposterous. Hell, like heaven, is a choice. And for there to be a choice, there must be an option between two or more things. So on the one hand, we have some Protestants saying certain people must go to hell because that is their destiny. No matter what they do, it doesn't matter, they're damned. On the other hand, we have some Catholics walking around saying that no matter what you choose with your free will, it's almost impossible to go anywhere but heaven. God understands and he's all mercy and forgiveness, they say. So we all go to heaven regardless of what we choose. That's as much of a denial of free will, at least practically speaking, as the Protestant firebrand yelling that so many are going to hell. What they have in common is that each way, in each way, in their own way, they misunderstand and consequently deny the free will of humans. Some of the Protestants have men going to hell regardless of all their good choices, and some uncritically thinking Catholics have all men going to heaven regardless of all their bad choices. One system paints God as a monster, the other paints him as a cupcake, but they each deny free will. A denial of free will, one way or the other, is why so many people today have no real regard for hell. It doesn't matter what you choose, either because you aren't choosing it, since you have no free will, or whatever you choose, God just ignores and sucks you up into heaven anyway. This is a cornerstone of the problems in the church today, a failure to either believe in or properly understand the nature of hell. And think about the moral consequences of these two systems. If there is no hell for you, do whatever you want. If you're going to hell regardless of your choices, well again, do whatever you want. Which is pretty much exactly where we are as a culture today. Until leaders in the church start preaching on hell and preaching on it accurately, expounding on all the ramifications of the doctrine of hell, no amount of evangelizing is going to stick because one of the primary components is missing. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.